In today's video, we are going to talk about motor mounts. A motor mount is a component that secures the engine to the car's chassis. It is supposed to absorb engine vibrations and reduce engine movement during vehicle operation. As a result, there are two main symptoms of a bad motor mount. First, if your car is vibrating at a stop while idling, it is especially noticeable when you first start the car and the engine is cold. If you feel vibration in the steering wheel, the dash is rattling, chances are you have a bad motor mount. Sometimes you may notice this vibration when you come to a stop at a traffic light, for example. To check it, go through the gears with the car running and see if the vibration gets better or worse depending on the selection. If it does, most likely you have a bad motor mount. You can also try to jack up the motor slightly to take the weight off that mount and see if the vibration goes away. Then do the same for the transmission side to check the transmission mount. Now, the second symptom of a bad motor mount is a clunk or a thud when you switch from drive to reverse or from reverse to drive. Oh yeah, I can hear a clunk. Boom. If it gets really bad, you may notice a thud when taking off from a stop. And the best way to locate a bad motor mount is to have an assistant switch between drive and reverse, having left foot on the brake and giving gas with the right one, while you are inspecting each mount for excessive movement. Now, what do mounts usually look like? How do I know I'm looking at the right thing? First of all, even though all mounts look different, they all have similar features. Here is a common type of a motor mount. Here is what it looks like with a bracket. And here is what it looks like in a car. These mounts sometimes are hydraulic and are prone to leaking when they fail. Here is another type of mount you may see in a car. In fact, I have a video replacing a timing belt on a car where removing this kind of mount is a part of the job. I'll add a link to that video in the description. Another very common mount type is like this one, round bushing with a metal sleeve on the inside. Here's what it looks like when it's bad and here's what it looks like in a car. Here's a good example of a torque strut and another one. These bear no weight of the engine, they simply prevent it from rolling or turning on acceleration or deceleration. And finally, some transmission mounts. Oftentimes they may seem small and inconspicuous in a car, but when torn, they can cause significant movement of the engine and transmission assembly. And to help you find and identify motor mounts in your car, I'm going to draw a little picture. Let's say this is the engine compartment, what you see under the hood, with this being the front of the vehicle. In a front wheel drive vehicle and some all wheel drive vehicles, the engine is placed sideways, like this. And at the back of it, we have a transaxle bolted to it with CV axles coming out of it and going to the front wheels. So this whole assembly, engine and transaxle together, are attached to the chassis to the body of the car through motor mounts. One at the front of the engine, where the serpentine belt is, and one at the back of the transaxle on the opposite side of the engine compartment. These two mounts are weight bearing. That's what the whole assembly rests on. Now on the sides, somewhere over here, we'll have two more mounts. These mounts act more like torque struts, not letting the engine and transaxle assembly turn excessively under acceleration or deceleration, whether in drive or in reverse. And what we saw in this clip is when you put it in drive, the wheels are trying to spin forward, which means the engine with the transmission are leaning backwards towards the back of the car. When these motor mounts wear out, the engine leans to the sides excessively, causing a thud or a clunk. Here is a Toyota Corolla with the engine pulled out of it. So you can see what my drawing looks like in real life. Right around here sits the engine side motor mount, with the engine missing, we see the transaxle on the right, 
with a motor mount on each side. One by the firewall and one by the radiator. Sometimes they are bolted to the engine, sometimes to the transaxle. And right there is a CV axle coming out of it, going into the right front wheel. Now at the back of the transaxle, we have the transaxle mount or transmission mount. So if one of these two mounts fails, the engine vibration will get transferred to the chassis. But if one of these mounts fails, it can cause a thud. But if let's say your car vibrates when in drive, but vibration gets better when in neutral, most likely this mount by the firewall is worn out. It transmits the engine vibration when it is under load, in which case I would replace it first and be on the lookout for the one in the front of the engine, because oftentimes it is the main carrier of engine weight. You also should remember, on some cars there are only three mounts and they are all weight bearing, which means any mount can cause vibration and any mount, if completely separated, can cause clunking. Now, when it comes to rear wheel drive or four wheel drive vehicles, their setup is a little different. Let's say this is our vehicle. This is the front of it and here is the engine compartment. The engine is placed long ways with the front of it facing the radiator and the transmission bolted to the back of it sits underneath the passenger compartment. Now from the transmission we have a drive shaft coming out and going to the rear differential and from the differential we have axles going into the rear wheels. In this setup we usually have two motor mounts on the sides of the engine and one underneath the transmission. They are all weight bearing and they all serve as torque struts and the main cause of clunking when switching from drive to reverse and back is usually free play in the differential. So check your rear differential for excessive play before replacing your motor mounts. On this pickup truck, for example, you can see the engine is pointing this way. This is the front of the engine where the serpentine belt is. And right there is the motor mount. On one side, and one right there. Now let's get underneath and take another look. Here is one mount and here is the other. Right there is the transmission mount and right there is the drive shaft coming out of it going to the rear differential. So the number one reason you may have clunking in a rear wheel drive vehicle when switching between drive and reverse is this free play in the differential. This should be enough for one video. Stay tuned for more videos on this topic where we're going to diagnose and replace some motor mounts. If this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Share your experience and give feedback in the comments section below. Links to the products you saw in this video will be in the description. Thank you for watching, good luck and take care.